Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Views from the Top. As always, I am your host, Scott Sturgeon, founder and senior wealth advisor at Oriad Wealth Partners, a fiduciary and fee-only financial planning and wealth management firm. We work primarily with doctors and business owners in building wealth and working towards the financial goals and objectives that they might have. As I say that, as you have pushed play on a video stating why financial goals are almost pointless. So maybe a little hyperbole in that statement, I have to admit, but I really do mean a lot of what that statement says, and I'm gonna get into a little bit of that here in a second. Before I do, shameless plug for Views from the Top in general, what I guess I would call a multimedia experience powered by Oriad Wealth Partners. I also put out a newsletter every two weeks where I provide insights just like I'm providing right now in a written form sent directly to your email inbox. You can subscribe to that through our website, www.oriadwealth.com. Okay, shameless promotion ending. Why are financial goals pointless? Here is why. When you think, or well, when you turn on the TV or you open a magazine and you see some advertisement or plug for some sort of financial services company, maybe they work in investments, in insurance, in annuities, whatever the case may be, there is almost always some mention or discussion around financial goals. Maybe they're helping you achieve your goals, work towards your goals, partner with you in your path towards your goals, achieving your goals. Whatever the case may be or whatever iteration it is used, it's used often and with good reason. I mean, it's, it's, it is a good concept and good premise. Helping people achieve the things that they want from their life, I would agree, has a lot of value. However, when was the last time, and think, think strongly on this, when was the last time you sat down, you wrote out an actual goal, you work towards that goal, and then you had the either literal or metaphorical finish line that you crossed of achieving that goal. And maybe you have, and, and maybe you didn't necessarily write it down, but you just had a goal of raising uh, great kids. And you have raised great kids. I mean, that is setting a goal, albeit again implicitly, and achieving it over time. But what I'm talking about is when you think and sit down and say, well, you know, I wanna have X amount in my portfolio by, uh, by Y date, that's maybe that's a goal to, to work towards and achieve. But it's not really a very exciting one, number one. And I think when a, a number two, one that people probably don't often think of or, or really seek to achieve over time. So there's a book I've been reading that really spurred a lot of, of really this conversation. It's, it's called Atomic Habits. It's by an author named James Clear. And within it, it's a great book. And within it, he addresses kind of this overall concept that by making small changes to your kind of your everyday life, you can achieve great things over time, you know, by kind of bits and pieces over time. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Uh, kind of a general premise, if you will. And there is within the book, a really great section that really resounded with me about goals, about setting goals and achieving goals. And why is it that we actually achieve the goals that we set out to achieve? And a lot of it that he premised is behind that is through your identity. How do you identify and what in what ways does that influence the way that you're able to achieve things? A really great example of how he how he phrased it. So if you are a smoker and you're trying to quit smoking and you're out and about, someone offers you a cigarette, you would potentially respond, oh no, thank you, I'm trying to quit. But in that instance, you're not identifying as someone who has quit smoking, which is your goal, your objective. You've instead simply said, oh, well, I'm trying to, or I'm still a smoker, I just haven't quit yet. The better response, as, as James Clear points out, that I agree with, would be simply to respond, oh no, thank you, I don't smoke. And those two phrasings are, are very similar, and there's, there's a lot of nuance between them, but there's a lot of impact and difference between them as well, and just how it's phrased and how you identify as a person. Really, that influences how you, how you work towards and achieve your objectives over time. So this concept got me thinking on a lot of things, specifically as it pertains to finance. And what I came up with, with was kind of this idea behind financial identity. How does your financial, what is your financial identity and how does it influence the way that you are able to work towards the things that you want in, in life? How do you go about spending money? What are your financial values? What are the things that you place value on? And you know, what are even the stocks that you buy? Why do you buy them? Do they align with your moral values, with your capitalist values? 
Whatever the case may be, in, in short, really I kind of define financial identity as the way that you interact with money, whether for your own benefit or to your detriment. And so I think when, this con when you think about this concept as it pertains to working with clients and the value that an advisor can provide to them, I almost view having a good grasp on that financial identity as integral to helping them work towards the financial goals or any goals really that they want to achieve. At some point in the past, potentially you bought your first house and you maybe had the goal of saying, I'd like to buy a, f a house in five years. But what if instead the idea had, or the, the phrasing had been, because I'm going to buy a house in five years, I'm only taking one trip per year and I'm putting the rest into a savings or, or low risk investment account because I, I want to be able to buy this house or, or for my down payment. The two phrases, obviously, one being very specific and the other one more generalist, I think goes towards that idea of financial identity and kind of dictating as to whether you actually are going to buy that house. In this, the former phrase, it's kind of just out there in the ether as to, and there's really no actionable plan. The second one is you have a very finite plan, very finite steps. You maybe have a set amount you're contributing each month. And if some big ticket item or some big expensive thing came up that you wanted to pursue, you deferred that or turned it down because you were had that overall objective and that identity of yourself as someone who will buy a home in five years. And so you changed your behaviors to, to reflect working towards that goal. So that's just one example, but I when I, I find this, this concept really, really interesting and really appealing for providing value to clients. And it's something I think is so important and really something that even you could just consider when it comes to your own finances and really having that identity. My, my, I guess my question or my challenge to you would be, if you feel like right now your financial identity does not align with your financial goals or your financial objectives, and you feel like it might be a fit or helpful to, ha to have someone help you in aligning those two, reach out. I would encourage you to do so, whether it even just, it's even just describing, subscribing to the newsletter um, or reaching out directly through our website, www.oriadwealth.com. This is really a lot of the objectives when I work with clients. We're always kind of from a very basic level, managing money, investing, moving cash around, making sure that we have everything, um, you know, apportioned out from a risk perspective and whatnot. And really from there, it's more so how are we managing and working towards goals and really aligning your financial identity and how you identify in, in, as it pertains to your finances and really you know, having the peace of mind of, of living your life and making sure that things are taken care of and ultimately living, living a fulfilled life at the end of the day. So lots to take in here. It's somewhat of, a, of an abstract concept, but one I've, I've really come to, to enjoy and I really love thinking through it a little bit. So again, if you feel like Financial identity and financial goals are somewhat out of alignment. Reach out. Uh, we always love to, to discuss and, and see if maybe it could be a good fit to work together. As always, I'm Scott Sturgeon with Oriad Wealth Partners. Thank you so much for tuning in to Views from the Top.